In 2010, to celebrate their 100th anniversary, Akamon introduced its own ink line. Originally in 150 milliliter bottles, whereas these bottles now contain 60 milliliters. They come in a very nice but also extremely practical bottle. Because of the design, with a marble in the neck of the faceted bottle, you're able to tippy top the ink to the top of the bottle. You might think this is a new invention, patented to the brim, but it's actually a very vintage bottle. According to the Dutch National Glass Museum, a precursor round bottle was designed in 1936. In years prior to that, the at the time French subsidiary to Waterman, Jeff Waterman, produced a similar ink bottle. The eight-faceted design was designed by Dutch designer Andries Kopier and produced for the Gimborne Ink Factory from at least 1941 and maybe earlier. You probably own some of the work of Andries Kopier. The immensely popular and copied Gilde Glaswer is designed by him. Other examples of his work are ripped flatware and pressed glass. It is the eight-faceted bottle that Ackermann recreated in 2010. Some people in the fountain pen community have a tendency to immediately add a comment on any article about Ackermann ink that the ink is supposedly produced by diamine, like that is a bad thing. Ackermann does not tell us who is producing the ink, but even if it were diamine, and the jury is still out debating on that one, it is not like those inks are some sort of a stock ink simply rebranded as Ackermann ink. The colors and properties are unique to Ackermann. The situation is comparable with Bunkbox ink. The Bunkbox ink is produced by Sailor, but the colors and properties are specific to Bunkbox. And if the retail price is your issue, if we compare the price between Ackermann inks and Diamine inks that come in a decent bottle, like the 150 years limited edition or the Shimmertastic series, all those inks are priced at about the same amount of 25 cents per milliliter of ink. If you just would like to know how to pronounce the ink names, I made a separate video for just that. You can find it at bit.ly slash say Ackermann. I also created links to similar videos made by others, bit.ly slash say Hiroshizuku and bit.ly slash say J. Herbin. In this video, I obviously will also refer to those ink names by their Dutch names, but if language is not your thing, I will also try to explain the background to these Dutch names. Royal Ackermann Blau Advasbar. It is the only color without a number. If a company in the Netherlands is 100 years in operation, they can apply for the title Royal Supplier. Ackermann is obviously the name of the company holding their predicate. Blau is Dutch for blue. And Advasbar means washable. Number one, Passage Blau. Passage is a reference to the store location of PW Ackermann in The Hague, and I already explained Blau meaning blue in Dutch. The Passage was built in 1885 and it is one of the oldest shopping malls in the Netherlands. It's here that the PW Ackermann shop is situated. Actually, they have two shops. One is in Amsterdam, one is here, in The Hague. And The Hague is the theme of all the inks of the Ackermann series. Number two, Residentie Blau. Residentie is the Dutch word for residence and a reference to the residence of the Dutch royal family in The Hague. Number three, Ackermann Blau. If you did not get that one yourself, you're clearly not paying attention to me mumbling here. Number four, Nassau's Blau. Nassau's Blau is actually a Dutch name for blue that was worn by staff of the house Nassau, the ancestry of the royal family. Even today, the term is used in military dress codes. Number five, shocking blue. Now that's not a hard one to pronounce. You might think it is a reference to the wow factor of this color. Ackermann's take on recreating the famous, now discontinued, Parker Penman Sapphire. In actuality, it is a reference to a Dutch rock band formed in The Hague in 1967. 
The biggest hit, Venus, went number one on the Billboard Hot 100 in February of 1970. The song was covered by Bananarama in 1986 and also ranked number one in the US. Both versions of the song ended up in the UK at number eight in the hit parade. Number 6. Binnenhof Blues The Binnenhof is the address of the two chambers of the Dutch Parliament, the Senate and the House of Representatives, in unison called the States General. My personal association with the blues part of this name is the same old, same old ad nauseum aspect of politics. Number 7. Koninginnenach Bla Once a year, the Dutch celebrate the birthday of the Queen on Queen's Day. The Hague is famous for the pre-party on the night before. The writing suggests we should actually pronounce it with the accent of the local working class of The Hague. It is a thick accent from the city, and with that thick accent one would actually pronounce it as Kuinginnenach Bla. Number 8. Diep Duinwater Blau my take is that this is just a reference to the color of a pond of water behind the dunes. Deep is deep, down is dune, water is water, and blauw is blue. Number 9. Laan van Nieuw Oost Indigo It is a botched up name of a street in The Hague, the Laan van Nieuw Oost Indië, named after the Dutch East Indies, a.k.a. Colonial Indonesia. Number 10. Ackerman Ijzer Halnoten Blauw Zwart Rather straightforward. Ackermann, Iron Gall, Blue Black. Number 11. Trève Turquoise. An alliteration with Trève and Turquoise. The Trève part refers to the Trèvezaal, a rather large hall room at the Binnenhof, where the Dutch cabinet keeps its weekly meetings in The Hague. Number 12. Maurits Huis Magenta. In English, het Maurits Huis is called Maurice House a museum in The Hague housing the Royal Cabinet of Paintings, mostly from the Dutch Golden Age. And yes, magenta is magenta. I think you might recognize this rather famous painting from the Maurits House. Number 13. Simplistisch Violet. A beautiful shading purple ink, and the name references Het Simplistisch Verbond, two Dutch humorists originating from The Hague. Number 14. Parkpop Purper. Parkpop is the largest one-day free pop festival in Europe. It is held once a year in Het Zuider Park. Purper means purple, but the Dutch word purper has a royal ring to it. If it is purple, the Dutch call it paars. And if it's purple but also fancy dancy, they call it purper. Number 15. Voorhout Violet. Voorhout refers to a lane in The Hague, and, being a proper lane, it's lined with trees. In spring, lots of crocuses are flowering beneath the trees, painting the Voorhout violet. Just not as bright as this color in the bottle with number 15. Number 16. Oranje boven. Literally, it translates to orange above, but it is a popular motto celebrating the royal family, albeit a bit dated. Number 17. Staten Generaal Rood. As I said earlier in this video, Staten Generaal translates to the States General, both the Senate and the House of Representatives that form the two Houses of Parliament. I'm not sure why Ackermann named one of their reds to it. Maybe it is because politicians are notorious for getting the budget in the red? Number 18. Garuda Rood. In Hinduism, Garuda is a Hindu divinity the Vahana of Lord Vishnu. Garuda is also the national emblem of Indonesia, and because of our colonial ties with Indonesia, we have quite a few Indonesian restaurants, and many of them are called Garuda or Garuda Indonesia. Akaman associated the Oriental Red with their favorite Indonesian restaurant at the Knutedijk, Garuda. Number 19. Rood Haags Plush. 
This name refers to the red velvet seats that were being used in the Dutch parliament, although the House of Representatives recently changed the color of their furniture to blue. Haags plush also has a negative connotation to it. Those that were elected in parliament and parked their bumps on the red velvet are hard to get rid of once they are in power. Number 20. Pukri pink. Again a nice alliteration with the two P's. Pukri references to the Pukri studio in The Hague. It is a Latin term meaning studying the beautiful. It is an artist-run gallery and foundation established in 1847. Number 21. Chinatown Red. Yes, easy to pronounce. And yes, The Hague has a Chinatown. Not as big as in many other cities around the world with about nine streets, but they even have the street names translated into Chinese. To be honest, the area is not well known to people outside The Hague. Number 22. Hopjes Bruin. Hopjes, also referred to as Haagse Hopjes, are a type of Dutch sweets with a slight coffee and caramel flavor. Bruin is the Dutch word for brown. I guess one could translate the ink name to toffee brown. Number 23. Bekakt Haags. The term in Dutch refers to a nickname of the accent upper class people have who talk posh or with a potato in the back of their mouth, as they say. It's sort of the stiff upper lip from The Hague. And kak is also a Dutch synonym for fecal matter. Number 24. Zuiderpark Blauwgroen. Zuiderpark can be translated to South Park and Blauwgroen means blue-green. There's a tree garden with trees from all around the world. You can barbecue in the park and there's quite a few art objects to see. Number 25. Denneweg Groen. This ink name can be translated to Fir Tree Road Green. The Denneweg is one of the oldest roads in the inner city with lots of decent shops. I think the name is used to link the color to fir and pine. Number 26. Groenmarkt Smaracht. Groenmarkt means green market. It is the oldest marketplace in The Hague and was in operation since the 13th century. Smaracht is the Dutch word for emerald. So there you have it. Green market emerald. Number 27. Bezuidenwoud Groen. Bezuiden hout refers to an area south of the Haasebos or The Hague Woods. Ackermann changed the H to pun the name into something that sounds like South of the Woods Green. Number 28. Hofquartier Groen. Het Hofquartier is the area around Palace North End, the working palace of the king. I'm a bit puzzled where the green comes in. It's in the middle of the city, lots of shopping, brick roads and parked cars. What is interesting in this borough is that the street lights are shaped in the form of a crown. Number 29. Hofvijver Grijs. The Hofvijver is a big and unattractive grey pond next to the old government buildings. Grijs translates to grey, fitting for both ink and pond. Number 30. Het Zwarte Pad. This name translates to the Black Path. It sounds sinister and mischievous, but it is in fact a very nice area, right behind the boulevard of Scheveningen, a beautiful beach walking road at the edge of Scheveningen coast. Oh, and Scheveningen is part of The Hague in much the same irking way as the city of London is part of London. In any case, it's a good thing this ink is not named Scheveningen, otherwise foreigners would not be able to order that ink verbally. I am afraid talking about these inks might lead to questions about buying them. I'm not affiliated with any of these vendors, but I don't think they would mind me pointing you in their direction. You can order them at vulpennen.nl slash en, the website of Akamon itself. Unfortunately, shipping ink-filled glass bottles is rather costly. If you are in the US, it might be worth checking if you get a better deal, dollar-wise, at Vanis Pens or Anderson Pens that both carry these inks at the moment.